I'm joined now by Tony from Illapak. In fact, we've come over to the stand, joined by the whole team uh, to have a little look at what they are well here to talk about at PPMA. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Tony. Well, thank you for coming along. So, EMA bought Illapak uh, 10 years ago. So we're, we're now part of the EMA family. We've, we've been a flow wrapping company for 53 years, mainly doing form, fill and seal on horizontal and vertical ceilings. What, what EMA have done more, more or less is build us a lot more towards the, um, the looking at the, uh, the effect of the plastics on the, on the world and everything. And we're looking at a lot more uh, recyclable, biodegradable, compostable materials. We've got our own laboratories so we can actually test people's materials and suit so, so the uh, machine system to the actual uh, to the, the packaging product products that we're packaging. Um, what else we've done a lot, a lot of lately is we're trying to make the machines a lot more user friendly to the customers. And we find that uh, when you're training and operators and you know with the migration of staff and everything, we're trying to make the, the machines as simple to operate so they can't go wrong. And, and one of the things we've done recently, if I can show you on this machine here, is we've actually incorporated into the actual screen and into the PC training videos for the for the operators so that they can actually look at how to put the film on, how to put change the jaws. The engineers can look at the, um, the wiring diagrams that, and we can even connect them up to the internet and actually order the parts, the spare parts, straight off the PC. What, we've, what we're also finding is that a lot of our customers are trying to reduce packaging. So we're looking at thinner films and different ceiling systems to make sure that we can still get the hermeticity and the gas flash in a longer life, but with the, with the same looking format, but with lower, lower per, lower levels of plastic, so lighter plastics and papers and recyclability and things like that. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, so many things that you touched on then. Um, just picking up on the sustainability side of it. I mean, obviously within the industry, it has been a challenge. And I mean, even from a couple of years ago, you've seen such a change within the industry where people are finding these solutions. So it's great to hear that you're doing that. Um, are you finding that it's something that your customers are wanting or is it more the consumer side of it? We're finding, it's very interesting because I think we're at a bit of a crossroads at the moment because for the last three or four years, or five years even, we've been looking at a lot of paper for recyclability, but clearly that's too expensive. So then they went towards PE, polythene, which made, we actually had to change a lot of the ceiling systems on the George to cope with the sustainability. But the only PE was the only recyclable film that we we choose. The problem is, if you look at our shelves, you can see that most of the materials are either laminates or polypropylene. So what they've done now is they've changed things to come out with something called OPRL, on pack Recycling Label. Now this then opens up a much wider field because then we can suddenly look at all the other materials. Um, and at the moment, as we all know, there's a plastic tax and things going on. So we're at a point now right, that where we need the plastic tax to pay for the, for the recycling plots. We need to really invest in our infrastructure within the UK for our refuse side so that all the, all the packs can be identified at the, at the central... Um, rubbish sites, etc. When they go through on conveyor system, they can identify the different plastics from the recycling label, blow them off, and go into their own recycling chain. And then they can introduce the recycled plastic, a percentage of it, into the plastic we use for the food, and that will then reduce the taxes and obviously reduce the rubbish. Yeah, absolutely, and really encourage that. Essentially, a circular economy, which is what we're we're after with that. As as per McCarthy, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> we're looking at this, you know, the full circle economy. Yeah. And we're even looking at, like, you know, because part, part of it will be the machinery. And we're not getting to that point yet with the full circle, but we are very, we're very conscious about the materials that we're using for the machines to make sure that they are recyclable. And, and, and as, as you just pointed out, the full circle economy is coming. So we will have to come to a point where we're probably leasing the machines and then taking them back and upgrading them ourselves. We're already doing it with the electronics. So the electronics go become obsolete after five or ten years, we come up with a new system so we can take the machine back, replace the electronics, and the machine lasts another ten years. Yeah, yeah. And that is becoming more and more of a trend, not just in the industry, but just globally, really, when it comes to uh, replacing items rather than, or replacing parts rather than throwing the whole thing out. Absolutely. If you've got a, a machine that can do more or less what you want it to do, but you've just got to subtly change the ceiling system or the control system, but the bulk of the machine is still as, as it was when it was sold, and then you're moving into the next the next generation. You can move to the next generation of materials, the mono layers and everything like this. So yeah, absolutely on the money there. Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting as well that you're really at the forefront of this. Um, and you can tell as well that it's something that you're really thinking about. And you're not thinking about just the now, it's thinking about 
the 10 years, the 15 years, the let's solve this for our customers now. Absolutely, and, and for the world. Of course, of course. I love that. Not just for our customers, we're going to solve the world. Come and see Tony if you want the world solving, that's what it is. Yeah, we're, we're here to help. Amazing. Um, so just before um, we let you get on and have a chat to some more customers, um, are you enjoying yourself at PPMA this year? I was enjoying myself at the PPMA. It's, uh, it was really good yesterday, fantastic day yesterday. Today's been a little bit quiet this afternoon, but yes, yesterday and this morning was fantastic. As long as I'm sitting down talking to customers, I'm happy. <laughs> I love that. That's all you need. Um, and why is it then important that you do come down to PPMA every year and, uh, like you say, chat to those customers? Well, it's, it's a two-way street because we get an opportunity to show people what we're doing and, uh, you know, and, and, and tell them what the latest technology is we're doing. But it's also a good opportunity to, to sit down and talk to people about what they want, what they're looking for, just not, not for just now and not just for materials or not for packing styles, but just the whole thing, what, they, what we can do to make things better. So, because we look, we look at our holistic approach, we do we supply the machines, but we also supply 24/7 telephone engineering support, seven days a week spares cover. Because the factories we look after are running seven days, so we try we try and listen and then respond and react to to, to what we need to do. Amazing, Tony. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, chat to us. And if you need not only your problems now solving, but for life, I think globally, save, save yeah. come and talk to us. There we go, save the world, come and chat to Tony. Thank you so, so much, really appreciate your time. Thank you.